sermon text today comes from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 9, verses 30 to 37. And they went on from there and passed through Galilee. He did not want anyone to know it, for he was teaching the disciples, saying to them, The Son of Man is to be betrayed into human hands, and they will kill him. And three days after being killed, he will rise again. But they did not understand what he was saying, and they were afraid to ask him. Then they came to Capernaum, and he was in the house. He asked them, What were you arguing about on the way? But they were silent, for on the way they had argued with one another who was the greatest. He sat down, called the twelve, and said to them, Whoever wants to be first must be last of all and servant of all. Then he took a little child and put it among them, and taking it in his arms, he said to them, Whoever welcomes one such child in my name welcomes me, and whoever welcomes me welcomes not me, but the one who sent me. Man, this is the word of the Lord. Let us go to God in prayer. Gracious God, open our hearts this day. Help us to live your word. Help us to do your work in this world, now and always. Amen. A woman was at work when she received a phone call that her daughter was very sick with a fever. So she left work. She stopped by the pharmacy to get some medication. She got back to her car and she discovered that she had locked her keys in the car. She didn't know what to do, so she called home and told the babysitter what had happened. The babysitter told her that the fever was getting worse. She said, maybe you might find a coat hanger lying on the ground that you could use to get into your car. The woman looked around and found an old rusty coat hanger that had been thrown away, probably by someone else who locked their keys in the car and was trying to get in. She then looked at the coat hanger and said, I don't know how to use this. She bowed her head and she asked God to send her some help. Within five minutes, an old rusty car pulled up with a dirty, greasy, bearded man who was wearing an old viper skull rag on his head. The woman said, really God, this is the help you sent? The man got out of his car and he asked her if he could help. She said, yes, my daughter is very sick. I stopped to get her some medicine and I locked my keys in the car. I have to get home. Can you use this coat hanger to unlock my car? The man said, sure. He walked over to the car and immediately the car was open. She hugged the man and through her tears she says, thank you so much. You are a very nice man. The man said, lady, I am not a nice man. I just got out of prison today. I was in prison for car theft, for carjacking, and I have been out for exactly one hour. The woman hugged the man again, and with her sobbing tears, she cried out loud, Oh, thank you, God, for answering my prayer, and thank you for sending me a profession. <laughs> Sometimes what God gives us, what God teaches us, what God wants us to know is not what it seems to be. But our ability to trust in God and our desire to want God to teach us will always pay off, and sometimes in ways that we can't imagine. That is one of the themes that has been running through this sermon series. We are looking at Mark 9, verses 30 through 37. In this passage of scripture, Jesus is teaching his disciples three concepts, three things that they need to know. Jesus needed them to learn why the Messiah had to be handed over and killed and raised up three days later. He needed them to understand that God's kingdom, in that kingdom, everyone else came first. The first shall be last and servant of all. Today, our series concludes with Jesus teaching his disciples that whoever welcomes a child in his name welcomes him. 
Before we get into that, I need to set the scene for today. This sentence of Jesus is spoken right after he tells the disciples that the first shall be last. It's important to know that when he was using this child as an example, it was still part of the larger conversation, explaining that for the greatness to occur in God's kingdom, the needs of others must come first. It's also important to note that when Jesus began this whole discord, he called his disciples together, and before he addressed them, he sat down. For Barclay, this act is significant. This is what he says. It says that he sat down and called twelve to him. When a rabbi was teaching as a rabbi, as a master teaches his scholars and disciples, when he was really making a pronouncement, he sat to teach. Here Jesus deliberately took the position of a rabbi teaching his pupils before he spoke. So what was so important here that Jesus needed to be seen as a master teacher? The crux of today is for us to understand what Jesus meant when he said, whoever welcomes one of these little ones in my name welcomes me. And whoever welcomes me welcomes the one who sent me. Jesus is stating something that as Christians we should already know and believe. When we welcome and accept, when we treat another human properly, we are honoring Jesus in the same manner. Jesus talks about this in Matthew chapter 25. Whatever you do for the least of these, you do for me. And whatever you don't do for the least of these, you do not do for me. When we are welcome and when we accept one another, we welcome and we accept Jesus. But here's my question. Why a child? Why did Jesus have to pick up a little one and turn this into an object lesson? Would this statement have been any less effective if Jesus said, whoever welcomes the religious people in your town, whoever welcomes any person who has faith in God, whoever welcomes us as children of God, or simply whoever welcomes anyone in my name welcomes me. For some reason, Jesus specifically said a child. I want to look at the significance of a child by looking at the role of a child in Jesus' time and looking at how we revere our children today. Sharon Hinge, who is a contributor to Feasting on the Word, states the following. Mark's audience would have heard the word child as referring to someone like the servant who served meals to everyone else in the household, in that both were seen without honor. A child did not contribute much, if any, to the economic value of a household, and a child could do nothing to enhance one's position or status. Children and servants had the same low or no social status. When Jesus taught his disciples to welcome children, this was a new approach in a society where children were considered second-class citizens. So with that in mind, Jesus is telling us that we should be welcoming and reaching out to those in our society who do not count, who are seen without honor. A person who has no financial power or social influence, a second class citizen. And this is probably a good reminder for us, because you know, it, it's very easy to welcome and accept someone into your life who has similar interests and hobbies and financial means and social status. Someone who lives in the same neighborhood, someone whose children go to the same school, someone you work with, someone you go to church with. It's easy to create friendships with people when you have things in common with them, when there is a mutual respect that both people can benefit from. And those relationships should not be discounted because they are the backbone of our lives. But it is also important for our lives, for our faith, for our relationship with God, that we seek out those whom we can do things for, those that we can help, those that we can make a difference in their lives, those people that we can accept as a fellow 
human being. In other words, when we welcome someone in Christ's name, we give to them the respect and the dignity and the honor that every person deserves. Whatever you do for the least of these, you do to me. Second thing to study here is to put the statement of welcoming a child in today's society. When I think of a child, I think of someone who can be temperamental and loud and controlling. Children cry a lot. They have sticky fingers. They tend to break things. A child can be selfish and self-centered and self-absorbed. A child gets mad when they don't get their way. They never want to eat their vegetables. And they don't like to shave. So maybe Jesus is telling us that it's not only important to accept and welcome the unloved or the unwanted, maybe it's also necessary to reach out to those that it can be difficult to care for. Those who need a lot of attention. Those that need much from us. Conversely, when I think of a child, I think of laughter and joy and someone who makes my heart sing. A child is full of innocence and wonder, imagination and insight. A child brings out the best in us, gives us hope, and even though they can be chaotic, they bring a sense of calm and peace to our lives. A child is, is innocent and full of forgiveness and grace. When you welcome a child in Christ's name, you welcome love into your life. And it doesn't matter in which time we are talking about. One thing about children that is timeless and ageless, one thing that they need, they need us to care for them. They need us to do things for them. They need us to teach them and nurture them and influence their lives so that they can be filled with God's goodness. This is what we do when we welcome a child in God's name. This is what we are called to do for God in this world. So I'd like to tell you a story about a little boy named Eddie. You know, it just doesn't have the same ring, does it? So let's change that. I was just checking on you all. Let's tell a story about a little boy named Bob. And Bobby comes home one day and he tells his father that his friend, let's call him Eddie, that his friend Eddie has invited him to his farm for the weekend. And Bobby's father is a very, very rich man. I'm even talking somewhere between Bruce Wayne Rich and Tony Stark Rich. That's superhero language for those who are very young. And Bobby's dad thinks that this is a great opportunity for his son to learn what it means to be cool. Because they're not. And he thinks it would be a good idea for him to spend the weekend with poor people. So that he can see what that life is like. A life that he never has to worry about. And he tells him this. He says, I want you to go have a good time. But I want you to see how poor people live. And I want you to tell me what you learn when you come back. So off he goes. Goes to the farm for him had a wonderful time. Bobby learns that on a farm there have work to do. So he spends his weekend doing the chores with everybody else. There's, there's cows to be milked, there's pigs to be fed, there's crops to be gathered, there's chickens to take care of. Bobby learned that there is a great circle of life in the world and he learned how, what that meant and how that directly affected this family. And Bobby learned that being on a farm and and living the way that his friends do is a lot of hard work. And there's things to be done. And he comes home, and his father's ready, and he says, Well, did you have a good time? He says, I did. He says, Did you learn what it means to be cool? And he said, I did. He says, Well, tell me what you learned. He says, Okay. I learned that we have a purebred dog that has his own house in our backyard. Eddie's family has three strays, and they get to roam over the entire farm. We have a pool in our backyard. Eddie's family has a creek that goes on for miles. He said, we buy our own food and have it delivered. They raise their own food, their own vegetables, their own things to eat. He says, 
We have butlers and maids and servants to take care of us. And his whole family lives on the farm, aunts, cousins, uncles, they take care of one another. We have imported expensive lanterns that light our backyard at night. They have the moon and the stars that they get to see by. We have 10 acres that our house is on. They have fields that go on and on and as far as the eye can see. We have a wall that surrounds our property and we have security cameras and a security team that takes care of us. They have friends and neighbors and they all take care of one another. He said, Dad, I had a great time this weekend. Thank you for showing me just how poor we are. And when, and when the dad heard this, he just had this welling up of pride for his son and all the shame and guilt that went with what he expected this weekend to be. So right then and there, the father had a, 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 a conversion, if you will, a come to Jesus meeting. And he got down on his knees and he prayed. And he said, God, thank you so much for this child that you have given me. And from this day forward, please let me see the world through his eyes. God says when we welcome a little child, we welcome him. When we welcome a little child, we welcome everyone. We welcome those that no one else welcomes. We welcome people that are difficult for us to love. We welcome them all with the innocence, with the love, with the peace and the calm that we get from little children. When we welcome a child into our lives, we welcome Christ into our lives. And when we welcome Christ in, we have our lives that are filled with love. Let us pray. Gracious God, help us to love and live as we should. Send us forth to be your people this and each day 